today we're going to go from this to this. What's up Speedy's Garage Gang and welcome back to the Speedy's Garage YouTube channel. I've got a lot of work to do today so I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm hoping this is the final clean prep and paint project I have to do on old project sport runner over there. I've been going through if you've been following along you know I've been really busy. Everything I've touched I have either cleaned, painted, or replaced. Um, even all the way down to the spare tire. It was a little a little rusty, a little gross looking, so I cleaned that up, painted it, and my goal is to get everything nice and protected. The truck's 21 years old. I plan on keeping it for a while, so I kind of wanted to go through it and do a little bit of restoration on it. I'm going to start. Uh, today, we're going to actually go through and do the chassis. I'm going to uh, clean up any rusty spots. There's not much, just a little bit of surface rust. Very lucky to live in an area where not a lot of salt on the roads most of the year. And when I, when I have <clears throat> had to drive, in snow and salt, um, salty roads, I immediately, as soon as, the, as soon as the weather clears up, I immediately go to a spray off car wash and wash the undercarriage. I've done that ever since I've owned the truck and it's paid off. I have very, very little rust, but I'm gonna go ahead and touch all that up, hit it with a lick of paint so it looks brand new. So let's jump right into it. Here's everything I'm gonna need. I went ahead and printed out the pages from the uh, service manual on the bumper components because I am going to pull the bumpers. I've done the front several times. It's only like six bolts. The back looks a little more interesting, but I'll figure that out when I get there. Painter's tape just in case. Got some aluminum foil. I'm gonna show you a trick when I get to that, po get to that point and I'll uh, show you why this is gonna be really handy. WD-40 obviously, uh, a couple of ratchets, hand tools. This won't be too big a deal, I hope, assuming the bolts aren't super rusted. Screwdriver for the, uh, for the front grill. I'm gonna use some sandwich bags that I label so that I can keep track of the bolts. I think there might be, especially looking at the, the rear bumper, there could be a whole bunch of bolts. I wanna make sure I keep track of what goes where. I've also gone down, I pulled some already. If they were rusted or looked kind of crappy, I've already been to the dealership and ordered, made me a list. I ordered a whole bunch of brand new bolts already. I'm just gonna replace them rather than try to clean them up. You can wire wheel these if you really wanna get picky about it, but that'll remove the zinc coating on them and then they just rust up again and you know, they weren't super expensive to get new bolts. And when I paint everything, brand new shiny bolts will look nice underneath there. And these are the little brackets that go to the spare tire carrier. These slide up into the frame rails. And then I've already ordered new bolts for the, for the tow hitch. These are 10.9. Uh, so I went ahead and upgraded those. I think the originals were only like standard grade and 10.9 is like grade eight, but 10.9 is the metric equivalent. So ordered those up. But these are these little Z bars that slide into the frame rail and then the bolts come through the frame and connect up with these nuts to hold the hitch in place. Well, a lot of people think these are welded on from the factory. And when I cleaned mine up and looked at them, they actually aren't. They're just, they're just press fit into these straps. And I got lucky and mine came out, but I didn't want to take a chance on having problems down the road if I ever need to you know, remove the hitch for some reason. So I had a buddy of mine tack weld them. So those nuts will never budge now. And I'm gonna hit everything with some uh, anti-seize compound when I put the bolts back in. The original bolts, they had disintegrated quite a bit and it eat up and the, the washers had even fused to the bolt. So I'm gonna put some anti-seize to prevent that. And these are the products I'm gonna use to I'll show you the clean ones first. A lot of simple green, I'm gonna use my little spray bottle, some engine degreaser, brake parts cleaner if I have any areas that have a lot of oil around them like the rear diff, for example. Automotive primer. Move my coffee. Some rust reformer in case I need that. I don't think I have enough rust. Maybe on the back bumper, that, that might be where I use this. And then I've been really impressed. This is what I've been using on everything else. It's Rust-Oleum Satin. And this new version comes with like a nozzle that has five different settings on it. And it's like a couple of different fans, a high output, standard, low output. I've used that a couple of times. I'm pretty impressed with that. It doesn't give you a lot of overspray. So, I'm gonna be using that, that paint, and you can kind of see how good it looks on the hitch. So it's nice and slick and smooth, but it's not super shiny, which is kind of what I wanted. I want it satin, but not gloss. Hope that makes sense. And of course, the pressure washer to wash the frame down. I'm gonna start with getting the grill out of the way, and it's just held in place with some of these little plastic tabs that sort of lock into place. A long screwdriver comes in handy 
get these loose. And once the grill pops off, some of these may stay with the vehicle. I find it easier, it's the little clips that hold it on. I find it better to uh, keep these with the, with the grill so that when you put it back together, oops, it goes this way. When you put it back together, it just snaps into place. 12 millimeter. Finally, these two 14 millimeter on each side. Don't forget to disconnect the turn signal and fog light if you got them. And finally, the last two 12 millimeter balance bolts. I went ahead and dropped the sport skid plate for 12 millimeter bolts. And I'm gonna pull this plastic trim, which is five push pins. Be careful with these. If they're as old as mine are, I didn't break any luckily. But that'll sort of get this out of the way so I can paint that frame rail there or that bumper guard. And if you're gonna fool with an old truck like this, I highly recommend you get one of these. You can see I've got replacement push pins for just about everything. I'll leave a link in the description where I got that way cheaper than buying them individually from the dealer. Now that's the front done. Now it's time to move on to the back. To get the rear bumper off, I'm gonna start with the mud guards. There's two 10 millimeter bolts and then a couple of push pins. Toyota loves their push pins, kind of like Dodge likes their plastic rivets. There we go. Next, I'm gonna go after this bumper panel. It's just a plastic cover, and I think there's a couple of bolts underneath it. My goal is to kind of peel back the layers of the onion so I can see the bolts that are actually holding the bumper on, and I'm gonna try to take the whole thing off in one piece if possible. Some people just try to pry that from the top, but I keep saying this, this thing's 21 years old, so I would rather push up from the bottom on these locking tabs if I can, and that'll hopefully keep some of the stress off of the plastic up top make it a little easier to come off without breaking anything there we go or a couple way up here in the sides i couldn't get to from the back so i just popped those out that's what we got left i had hoped i could take the bumper off with the extensions attached but unfortunately there's one bolt on a bracket way up in here that you can't get to with the bumper extension in the in the way so what we're going to do is go ahead and pull the bumper extensions off and it's just four 12 millimeter bolts but this one up here hopefully you can see that's a little little cruddy you're probably going to want to hit that with some penetrating oil liquid wrench or something let it soak a minute and you want to take it out first because if you torque on that and this starts to move you can see it could want to bend out so i'm going to take that one out first <laughs> Clean work area is a happy work area. And here's where those Ziploc bags for the bolts are gonna come in handy. All right, the best I can tell, there's like eight bolts left. There's two that connect this support to the body here and here, and then two on each side up top. So that's two, four, six, eight. I'm gonna do the ones underneath first. That way when I loosen the top ones, I can just slide the bumper out, hopefully. Well, that's it for deconstruction. I did go ahead and pull the spare tire carrier brackets too. I'm gonna to clean those up. That's everything we got to remove from the truck. Next up, got to pull old Project Sport Runner out, give it a pressure wash on the frame, and I gotta take a look at that rear bumper. There's a little more rust on it than I really wanna see, so I'm gonna treat that, see if I can't clean it up. I decided to go ahead and also pull the fuel tank skid plate. It's more 12 millimeter bolts, just five of them. Very easy to get to. The only thing to be aware of is there is a bracket that holds some wiring and fuel line stuff uh, right up here on the top. 12 millimeter bolt comes in from the top and the brackets up here. Don't forget to do that or you'll end up pulling the bracket down. And then also remove the splash shield and it was three more 12 millimeters. Probably got to replace those are pretty cruddy. 
and a uh, push pin which disintegrated as soon as I pulled it. So I'll have to replace that too. Good thing we got that box of push pins. Now that everything initially pressure washed, I'm going to hit it with Simple Green pretty much full strength and let it soak. And if I can reach it, I'm going to scrub it with this brush to break up some of that grime, let this Simple Green soak for a little bit, and then pressure wash it again, let it dry, get ready to paint it. I'm going to remove the rear bumper bracketry so that I can have a closer look at the actual chrome cover and see what I need to do to treat that. It's not as bad as I thought it was, but it still has, you can see it's got some pretty good surface rust on there. We're gonna clean that up. And this bracketry comes off pretty easy. It's six bolts, 12 millimeter across the top, no trouble. And then some 12 millimeter nuts. And I got lucky on these. I, I thought they were more corroded than they, than they actually are. They're not great and I did order new ones, uh, but basically the bracket comes out like three three pieces that and then two sides so i'm gonna take these off clean them up really good and these will get a coat of paint as well There it is, all sprayed. This stuff has to dry 24 hours, so I'm gonna leave it and decide tomorrow if I'm actually gonna top coat it. I may just leave it like that. It's the next day, I wanna let the frame dry really well, and I've got all the bumper and the uh, spare tire bracketry hanging from my tent here so I can get to everything. And since these were the most, had the most surface rust, I'm gonna hit them with this rust reformer, and then I'm gonna get after the frame on the actual truck. I like this stuff. Looks like it's gonna seal everything up really well. The only downside is it does take 24 hours to dry, so won't be able to paint these till tomorrow. And before painting all this stuff, obviously I did wire wheel, uh, sand with 400 grit sandpaper, and washed them twice just to make sure they were as good as they could get before I put that stuff on there. Other parts like the front bumper brackets that weren't rusty are just gonna get some of the Rust-Oleum automotive primer and then top coated with that satin. The nice thing about the primer is you can top coat it in 15 minutes. It's not like the uh, rust reformer, it takes 24 hours. I decided to jack up the front end and I'm gonna pull the tires and wheels to give me better access to some of these suspension components while I'm painting them. And since this area probably gets a little more grime than the rest of the frame, I'm gonna wipe it down with uh, acetone just to try to get as much of it off as I can. Up here, there's not a whole lot I have to avoid. Everything's pretty well black. I'm gonna avoid the spring, but that's easy because um, it's more shiny. This is the uh, TRD Tundra spring and that's how it came. I did tape up my stainless red uh, braided brake line. But other than that, we're good to go. Just start painting. couple of other little tricks you can use a piece of cardboard to act as a, a block for where you don't want paint to go and if you do get paint on something you really didn't want it on like this brake line for example you can just wipe it down with your acetone it'll clean right up and there is what it is gonna look like nice satin sheen kind of subtle but clean exactly what I'm going for now just gotta do the rest of the frame There was quite a bit of detail on the rear diff that I wanted to, or the rear axle, that I sort of wanted to preserve. Some of the bolts I went ahead and took out. You have to decide how much of this you want to do. Um, I've got a replacement for some of these, but I want to get the lines out of the way where I could get good access. I did tape up the parking brake cable and anything else I didn't want to get paint on. Some electrical connectors up top. I did paint the bracket for the vapor canister. Uh, I did paint those bolts because they were not too bad, but I didn't want them to rust. 
also took them out and put some anises on them so that's how i've got it looking i did wipe everything down i have wire wheeled it and wiped it down with acetone so it is ready for paint but i wanted to show you that so you kind of get an idea of some of the stuff you can do probably most people just paint over this but i think the shiny bolts against the satin black will just give it a nice finished restored look which is what i'm going for So there it is. <clears throat> Hopefully now you can see why I was looking to uh, maintain some of that detail. So I just put the old bolts back in for now, but like I've got new ones for most of this, and I think being strategic about what you paint versus what you don't is, is a difference. Most people probably wouldn't go to that level, but OCD, blessing and a curse. And I also made sure to paint inside the back of these frame rails. They weren't bad, but these actually got primer and paint just to be extra safe. Super happy with how that came out. Here's the front. Again, it looks awesome. Using a little piece of cardboard, that's a, a good tip. It'll help you from getting paint, too much paint on the underbody. Not that it matters a ton, but it does make a difference. So that's project done. Now I just need to go inside and take a bath in mineral spirits. And I'm gonna let all this dry a day or two and then uh, it'll be time for reassembly. Everything is nice and dry. I've got the new bolts laid out with the parts they go with. Some of them came back, these are fresh from Toyota and they're clear anodized. I really wish they had been, or uh, clear zinc, I guess I should say. I really wish they had been the yellow zinc. I, I kind of like those better. They're a little more classic Toyota, but I guess that's what they're using now, so it is what it is. I will be going an extra step and using some anti-seize on all the, all the bolts just to make sure in the future if I try to take it apart, I won't have any problems. Trailer hitch, all the mounting hardware for it. It's painted up. Remember, I had these tack welded, uh, these Z-bars. I had the nuts tack welded on there. They're painted up too. Hopefully they'll last a long time. Even did the little wiring harness bracket, cleaned the wiring harness up really good. I've got everything laid out to start rebuilding or reassembling the rear bumper. So now we just got to get to it. Start putting parts back on the truck. And I'll be honest, I am glad to not be painting anymore. When reassembling, just pay attention because the brackets are side specific for right and left. And pretty much all the bolts are 13 foot pounds of torque if you care. I'm just gonna hit them with the uh, either the ratchet or this really light power impact, just snug them down and call it good. And in the end, I did decide to go ahead and put a coat of that satin paint on the back side of this bumper on top of the rust reformer. I figured the paint would just be another layer of protection and might make it last a little bit longer. And reassembly is just the exact opposite of removal and disassembly. And that looks really, really good. Something satisfying about having brand new, non-rusty fasteners. On the top, I did reuse some of the factory fasteners because they were in actually really good shape, the ones that were underneath the little bumper cover. But I do have six brand new ones that I'm gonna use for underneath because some of those, as you can see, were pretty, pretty nasty. And I am using the anti-seize on all of these bolts. Just a, just a dab, and that way, it should prevent them from seizing up if I ever need to do any work on this in the future. And it's just good uh, preventative maintenance if you got it apart already. When you're dealing with a lot of random bolts, baggies that you label are one way to do it, but you can also just leave the bolt with the, uh, or the nut, or bolt with the screw it goes to if you can. And that's what I did with these front bumper brackets. That way, I know where they go. And the torque on these is only nine foot pounds, so I'm just gonna get them snug. If you remember, I said to put the little clips that hold the grill 
put them back in the grill. Don't don't leave them in the car. It'll make them or attach to the vehicle. It'll make everything way easier to install because then you just line up the tabs, pop it in place. So having someone help you get the bumper set in place, the rear bumper, makes it a lot easier. You can get them to start one bolt on each side at the top. And then I recommend you just put the top ones in loose until you get the bottom ones all started. Make sure they all thread in nice and easy. And of course these have anises on them. And then we'll tighten the top ones down and then come back and finish the bottom. Don't forget the little bumper trim pieces. Somehow my push pins didn't disintegrate. I have no idea how for these uh, mud guards, but I'm going to be able to reuse them. I'm very surprised at that, but I got lucky, I guess. They didn't break on the other side either. So all I gotta do is reinstall it all. Ready for the bumper trim. And I did hit it with some uh, back to black restore like you saw. Figured it might as well while I had good access to it. Since these bolts, these are the uh, hitch bolts, since they were the most corroded, I put a pretty healthy amount of anti-seize and I put some underneath the washer as well before I'm going to install them. Hopefully that'll prevent uh, further corrosion and through grade 10.9, so they're a little bit harder. Maybe they'll do better. And if you have somebody to help you, it'll make it way easier. So I had Miss Speedy hand me the hitch while I laid kind of underneath the truck so that I could get these back two started. And then I put some jack stands in place just to hold it. Inserted the Z-bars, and I actually found if I put them in upside down to get them over these bolts, and then turn it over once it was passed, I could hold it in place to get the other bolts started. And I'm not sure what the torque spec is on these bolts, but they're a grade 10.9, 17 millimeter going through the chassis. I'm gonna be a little careful with the ones that go through the Z-bar, but I'm just gonna hit them with the impact to tighten them down. And don't forget your electrical connection for the trailer hookup. And this is a factory hitch and they've got some access holes or something, I guess when they were putting the thing together and it came with decals over those, believe it or not, well, they're long gone. And I noticed it can rust from the inside out. So I'm gonna use some Toyota FIPG form in place gasket and a couple of push pins from my box over there. And I'm going to seal that up. That ought to last a really long time. Well, that's a wrap on that project. And I kind of had a mantra as I was working on this. If I touched it, I was either going to clean it, paint it, or replace it, including bolts. And that's exactly what I did. And while I was underneath there, I decided to start removing a bunch of stuff so that I could work with it outside from being underneath the truck, like the fuel tank skid plate, the front skid plates, even the little sport edition bumper shield that I put on the truck. I'm gonna show you guys how it turned out. I'm super happy. Number one, I know that the frame hopefully is protected from any further corrosion. Um, it didn't have hardly any on it anyway, but just getting that that rust prevention paint on it makes me feel better, number one. Number two, it's a satin finish, so that should make it much easier to clean when things do get on it. If I go off-roading or get mud on it or dirt or salt or whatever, a little hot water from a pressure washer should wash it right off because that satin paint will have a little bit of a slick finish to it. And number three, it looks great. I'm gonna show you guys kind of how it looks now. And while I had that sport little front aluminum bumper skid off of the truck, I did decide to go ahead and clean that up and I wet sanded it. It was pretty, pretty oxidized. So I wet sanded it with some 400 grit wet dry sandpaper and I used it wet. 
and then I polished it. I didn't want it shiny, like to a mirror finish, so I just did a light polish on it with some metal polish, and it came out looking great, looks good as new, back to that satin finish. You can see there, the front skid plates look great, frame, cross members, back, super happy with how all of that turned out, even the spare tire and especially the hitch. It was getting to be um, where it looked pretty bad, and now it all looks good as new. So it was quite a bit of work. Like I said, it, it kind of got into some detail there doing all those bolts and everything, but in the end, I think it was worth it. Not super expensive. I think all of the bolts and everything were probably $40 all said and done, about $60 in spray paint and primer and a little bit of my time. And I was able to resurrect that rear bumper and get it all sealed up too. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage as well as the website www.speediesgarage.net and hopefully I'll see you out there.